Hello everyone! We are back. This is part 13 of Let's Play Dark Souls. Uh, we're right here where we left off. Um, Laurentius is gone since I've uh, closed the game and reloaded. <laughs> um, so we'll eventually see him again. Um, but uh, we'll get to that when we get there. Um, we have a new buddy over here who uh, we're going to talk to in a second here. But before we do that, let's uh, go check up on our other friends here. Uh, first being Griggs. Now that we're smart enough, let's see what he'll do when we talk to him. Oh, hello. Terrific to see us both in one piece. Incidentally, would you care to learn any sorceries? You're clearly talented, and besides, I owe you. Of course, we will require some materials, but I'm happy to teach you some elementary spells. Are you interested? So we're going to say yes and learn some magic. Splendid. Very well. I am pleased to have a chance to give something back. Well then. Let's get started straight away. Okay, so um, pretty much he's just going to sell a few sorceries, which, um, you know, you got your basics like soul arrow, heavy soul arrow, great soul arrow. Um, a few cool ones like fall control, which uh, it'll help you with fall damage um, and be a little more stealthy. And a few other miscellaneous ones, which uh, for, honestly I don't really care about. <laughs> um, I don't plan on doing too much magic. Um, later on I'll probably buy some of these out. Uh, you can buy a wand if you need. And he sells these two cool rings. Um, one that'll boost your sorcery damage and this one that'll uh, make any effects that have like, uh, you know, that will last for a while. They'll last longer when you wear this ring. <laughs> so um, they're a bit pricey though and we don't really have too much of a use for them since we're not focusing on magic quite yet. Um, but yeah, if you, if you want to make a magic build then this is your first like uh, best access to magic. So let's uh, leave him be. Goodbye then. Do stay safe. So yeah, we, are, uh, we haven't seen the last of him. We'll definitely be talking with him down the road. Um, let's come up here because Petrus is also back. Let's uh, see what he has to say. Uh, oh, you again? Me? Uh, I've become separated from my lady. I've scoured near and far, but no sight of her. Where could she have gone? My lady, to think I swore to protect you with my life. So yeah, he seems to have been separated from his friends, and coincidentally, he happens to conveniently be the only one that escaped. So, we'll keep an eye on you. Your Highness, where have you gone? I am entirely to blame for this. Oh, woe is me. I am unworthy. Deathly so. So you have anything else to say? Oh, I'm sorry. Miracles, was it? Sometimes I lose myself. Pay me no mind. Uh, so yeah, he will eventually sell us things again, um, which you know, we don't have anything to use for. But um, yeah, he's also a little suspicious right now. Um, we'll definitely, as usual, we'll be seeing more of him down the road. Um, what's this say? Gesture. Oh yeah, a little tutorial on how to do those. Trust me, we we know how to we know how to gesture. <laughs> so this guy here, um, he you might be really scared considering he's like some monster boss looking kind of guy coming out of like a menacing black pit but um you can actually go up to him and talk so let's see what he has to say um he actually has a lot to say so um feel free to sort of fast forward if it starts to become a little too monotone and i'll try to give the short version afterwards um so yeah let's uh get this started ah hello was it you who rang the bell of awakening i am the primordial serpent king seeker frat close friend of the great Lord Gwyn, chosen undead, who has rung the bell of awakening. I wish to elucidate your fate. Do you seek such enlightenment? Very well. Then I am pleased to share. Chosen undead, your fate is to succeed the great Lord Gwyn, so that you may link the fire Cast away the dark, and undo the curse of the undead. To this end, you must visit Anor Londo, and acquire the Lord Vessel. So he definitely has more to say. I am pleased to see you well. Is it something urgent? Um, oh yeah, so um, he's got a lot of options. Um, one of the cool services he provides is you can break down your Titanite. Um, into smaller versions. So like if I give him a large shard, I'll get some normal shards. Um, same thing with the greed. 
if I give him chunks, then I'll get large shards, um, etc. You, you can even give him your slab, which um, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, you can also just feed items, which basically just means it's a way to throw away things you don't need. Like, So for example, I have two long swords because I've been picking them up. I can just give it to him and get 50 souls and he'll make a really gross sound effect. It seemed like eating the item, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, so he's got a cool thing there where you can just dump things you don't need or convert. Because um, if you if you know like to grab certain chunks or whatever at certain points in the game, you can like come here and get yourself like a bunch of green shards, for example. Um, but we don't need to do that, so let's just see what else he has to tell us. Those who seek the realm of lords must brave Sen's fortress, a deadly house of traps. Many have gone before you, but none have returned. Fate has chosen you, but proceed with caution. Uh, anything else? Those who seek okay, so actually he doesn't have as much to say as I thought. Um, yeah, basically, ringing the ringing the two bells was sort of like the trial test to find a uh, an undead who actually is chosen. So we're not the first chosen undead, but um, we are potentially one of the proper chosen undead, if that makes sense. Um, it's not super clear if like being chosen means you are the chosen one, or like you've been chosen to potentially be the real chosen one. I don't know. It's a little confusing, but essentially it's all just an elaborate strength test because like you said, we need to um, succeed Lord Gwyn, who um, part of his backstory is that during his Age of Fire, um, you know, they were basically running on, um, you know, magical flames and the main source of fire they were using, the first flame, started to dwindle, you know, because like fires, they don't, they don't burn forever. So uh, what Gwyn basically did is he um, he went over to the kiln, he threw himself into the fire, burning his own soul, and basically got it to last for another whole Age of Fire. The only difference being that, uh, and if he can stop chasing me, the only difference being that Gwyn is no longer around to uh, keep watch of things. And unfortunately, even that age eventually dwindled, so his, in a way his sacrifice was in vain. Um, and that's kind of where we're at now. So. Ringing the bells and now making our way to Anorlando is all a test to um, to see if we can succeed Gwyn and basically do the same thing. Uh, throw ourselves into the fire and keep the Age of Fire going. Um, you know, we're not going to last long after that. But anyway, here we are at the, uh, the Undead Parish bonfire. And this is part of what I was saying. As you can see, there's that big... Um, big gate that we found our friend who isn't there anymore he might have uh, you know wandered in uh, but this is why we kindled this bonfire now we have 10 estus flasks it's going to help us a lot here and um, i am actually going to level up because i said last time i had plans for the souls but i sort of uh went over my notes and how i'm planning to do things and i kind of just want to press on uh we'll save what i was originally planning to do with that for later so i want to get a little bit more vitality since like i said we're not really in the early game anymore so Things are going to ramp up a little bit, so uh, we do have to be careful there. Now, I don't have to be human quite yet, so I'm not going to burn any humanity. Instead, we're going to press on. Um, one more note, too. Um, once we sort of cross this threshold, it's going to be a bit of like a want gauntlet way up for a while. So if you have any, you know, um, business to attend to, you know, upgrading weapons, upgrading, grabbing some armor, any stuff like that, uh, now is the time to, you know, handle all that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna press on. Like it, you can backtrack out of here if you want. There's gonna be shortcuts, but I recommend just getting ready now and then moving on up. So we're gonna do exactly that. And here we are at Sen's fortress. Now, who is Sen? Um, no one really knows. <laughs> I don't even know if it's like a person. Oh wow. So yeah, here's our main enemies here. Um, so if you notice too, I avoided that that pressure plate there because when you go on it, it shoots those arrows which we don't want to deal with yeah, now these two always give me a lot of trouble but they're not so bad you can actually parry them if you get your timing right but i did not and yeah these guys are they are pretty bulky um they can definitely take a few strong hits and you know that's with my black knight sword like if you're coming in here with something weak um it can potentially give you a hard time, but nothing we can't handle. So 
let's uh let's start clearing this place out. Uh, first thing to grab is going to be right here. Just a nice soul item. Nothing too special, but we do have some pretty cool loot to find in here. So uh, yeah, this uh, <laughs> this place is like your generic like Scooby Doo haunted house of just unnecessary, just convoluted traps. <laughs> but um, we're gonna. It's pretty fitting, you know, in terms of like a challenge for a game. But when you think about it, like we really need all this here. Um, yeah, we got those cobra snakes shooting lightning at us. Right, there we go. Got the parry. Okay, that'll do it. Um, but yeah, my my parry timing is usually really bad. Whoa, nearly got me. <laughs> um, so you'll notice too, uh, down there is some stuff which. Uh, ooh. You know what? Let's be brave. Let's uh, let's actually go down there and take care of business. Uh, now make sure you have full health before you drop down. Oh, oh, because we're gonna be in the tar pits and we got these guys here, and I should have put on my rusted ring. Um, I did not though, so we're just gonna book it out of here. Now, if you want to go down there and fight all those guys, there's actually three other of those type knight demons. Um, feel free to do that. Um, I'm not gonna do that right now, because we don't need the type, the demon type knight at the moment. Uh, we will down the road, so I'd rather come back when we're a little stronger and more prepared. Um, but I just dropped down to grab this uh, soul item right here, and right here, if you give the wall a smack, to find out it's just an illusion. So let's see what we can find if we climb up this ladder. Um, it's nothing too special. It's kind of secret, um, but you, you'll see what we get. Um, so up here, we're going to be able to actually fight the guy that opened the gate for us. <laughs> yeah, so he let us in and we're just going to thank him. So this is a giant, by the way, who I believe has gone hollow. It's definitely not looking too good. Now, you want to be careful, because they do these like big, heavy, slow attacks, but eventually he's going to do like a full-on angry swing. Um, oh, he got me. Let's see if I can get him to freak out. No, he's not cooperating, so we're just going to kill him. Uh, we're going to get to fight a few more, so hopefully one of them will do the attack. But um, You kill him, and then you can get a fight night chunk. So. Nothing too important right now, especially because we can't even use Titanite Chunks, but uh, we came up here just to kill him now. he He's a mini-boss, so once he's gone, he's gone. Um, so you can't just keep farming for Titanite Chunks, unfortunately. So we're just going to drop down here, heal up, and continue on our way. Ooh. So, yep, just watch out here, because if one of these axes hit you, they're gonna it's not going to kill you, but then it's going to throw you off, and then the fall combined from the damage you took is probably going to kill you. Unless, like, you've only been leveling up Vitality for some crazy reason. <laughs> now, working our way up here, I like to put on my shield. Now, you ought to be careful here, because... Like, if, if you get hit right before... right when you're in front of an axe, like, you'll absorb the hit but then um, he'll knock you back into the axe and you'll fall off and not a good time. So let's open up this chest and avoid those spikes and we're gonna find a couple of large titanite shards. Very handy. Um, this might be like the third or the second and third shard you find in the game. Uh, we're not gonna mess with him. Oh yes, that guy. <laughs> um, you can sort of just block him off here. Just raise your shield and then um, just wait for the rocks to kill him. Um, it, that will take a little longer, but it's uh, a lot funnier. <laughs> uh, so we're not going to mess with him too much. We're just going to finish him off there. Now, um, make sure you wait for the boulder to pass. And then you don't want to waste a second. Just start running. Make your way up here. And then get into this little alcove. Uh, oh, come up here. Finish off this guy. Who's guarding another treasure chest right here. And if we open this up, we're going to find ourselves the Ring of Steel Protection. Um, this is an interesting ring that I uh, never actually use. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It just raises your defense a whole bunch. So not super useful, but uh, may as well pick it up. So if we wait for the next boulder to drop, trust me, in this area, you don't want to rush it. You want to take your time, wait for the boulders. <laughs> Otherwise, you might regret it. Uh, we're going to drop down here, and we're going to find the shuffle. 
which is like a kind of a, a curved sword, one-handed thing. It's uh, definitely not something we're too interested in. Um, down here, you're going to notice our buddy right there. We're going to try to uh, dispatch these snake men without having them hit him. Oh, watch out for that attack, because you cannot parry that. And can we kill him with one backstab? We can. Very nice. Um, one interesting thing is, sometimes if you drop down here, there's about a 50-50 chance that these snake men are already going to be dead, and like their bodies will be laying here. And like, it's not known for sure what killed them, but it was probably Siegmar. <laughs> so let's uh, give him a chat, see what he's up to. Oh, forgive me. I was absorbed in thought. I am Siegmar of Katarina. Quite honestly, I've run flat up against a wall. Or a ball, to be precise. I'm afraid I'm a bit too tough to be up running those things. So here I sit in quite a pickle, weighing my options, so to speak. <laughs> Anything else to say? Uh, like to try some rolling. Bah, no job. My head would spin. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, he's, um. Okay, yeah, same thing. Um, so he doesn't have much more to do here. He's just gonna. You know, he, he overcomes one wall, you know, closed gate, and now he's just immediately blocked by another problem. <laughs> That's a pretty recurring theme with him. Now. His problem is he can't run up the balls fast enough because he is a um, he's using some pretty heavy armor that also makes him look fat. Um, so we're gonna once again sort of solve the problem for him without him even realizing it. And um, one thing to quickly point out, uh, he did introduce himself again to me. That's because um, for this character, when I was re rushing through after, if you remember. Uh, a few episodes ago, when I said I had to switch characters because I messed up the recording, um, I did not talk to him the first time, and um, you actually don't have to. You still get a second chance to talk to him here. But in order to see him for the next part of his quest, um, you either have to talk to him now or talk to him in the beginning, but you can skip one or the other if that makes sense, um, or you can do both. But if you don't talk to him in the beginning and you don't talk to him now, then that's, that's it. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. So here we are in another part of the room's fortress is here. So. Uh, you can see there, there's another snake man. Uh, we're gonna want to just do that, trigger the trap, and ooh, he got his shield up, but did a lot of damage there. We're gonna just take him out, just like that, no problem. But you know, if you're caught in the corridor and you're not keeping an eye out for those platforms, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. So up here, we're gonna have um, more of the same, um, yeah, <laughs> boulders, and we're gonna sort of just follow it down. And if we make our way here, we should be able to outrun the traps. The balls are going to fall down there. Um, right in here, we're going to find some treasure. So if you go up to it and you hit A, um, oh no. Yeah, so be careful. <laughs> this is a mimic. And I hope I don't... Oh, that killed me. Awesome. <laughs> so my health is kind of low. Uh, these things do a lot of damage. It is possible to survive them and... Um, it's as simple as just, you know, not going up to them and hitting A. But, yeah, so those are mimics. <laughs> They're enemies disguised as um, treasure chests. Uh, very infamous enemies, as usual. Um, I was hoping I would survive that, but I guess, you know, I've been focusing on other stats. Uh, it is possible to not get one shot there, but, you know, like I said, your best bet is to just not <laughs> open the treasure chest in the first place. Um, I'm at the point where I know about most of the mimics in the game, so I can just avoid them. But in general, if it's your first time playing, I advise just play cautiously and like... You can, ah, you got me. Sorry, let me just take these two out. Anytime there's multiple enemies is when there's a problem. Oh god. Alright, just to overkill here. So uh, yeah, I, um, I knew that was the mimic, I just wanted to showcase at least one time getting hit. <laughs> so let's uh I'll meet you back there at that spot. Alright, welcome back. Um <laughs> here we are again. Here are our souls. I'm gonna very carefully make sure I recover and not open it again. Um let's see how this goes if we actually attack first. Um their animation takes a while to get up and oh that that killed them. Wow. 
Um, but as you can see, he's got a very long, skinny body. He'll um, he'll sort of hop around and laugh and make like really just creepy effects. <laughs> but um, the nice thing is, each mimic does actually hold cool treasure. This one has a lightning spear. Um, it's not like a special weapon; it's just an actual spear. But it's been upgraded to use lightning. Um, so back out here, you're gonna wanna wait a bit, and then the boulders will accumulate in that hole and eventually build up so you can break the wall. Here we're gonna find the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring. Now, this is a very good ring. Um, it's not a ring we're gonna always use. What it does is that it increases um, your chance to get loot when you kill things. So um, when you're farming for stuff, always have the Gold Covetous Serpent Ring on and um, it'll just make your life a lot easier. Now, um, I haven't had to grind yet or search for anything, so don't have to do that quite yet, but you know, um, those spots like with the rats for getting humanity, um, that's a great example, or if you're trying to get something in item drops, uh, it's just, you know, if you're grinding for something, wear that ring, <laughs> trust me. So as you can see too, one thing to point out, make sure you get off this elevator, um, because otherwise it'll just bring you up into the spikes. It also does kind of make it a one-way elevator, right, like we can't ride this back down, because if we got on, then we would just immediately get squished on the spikes, and by the time we can hop on, it's going too fast, so. It's essentially a one-way road. <laughs> um, now coming this way, um, that is basically the way to get to the boulder room. Um, right here, this does not open from this side. Uh, we're gonna get to that in a second here, but you can sort of just drop down. Uh, down there is that room we were in earlier where the guy was sort of leaning on the floor. And uh, what we can do is, if we actually aim the boulders that way, by turning the lever here, and the boulders will always go in the opposite direction of the stick. Um, that'll send a boulder down there. And it already broke open the wall, as you can kind of see. And it's also killing a snake man. So we're going to send down one more boulder. But before we go back down there ourselves, we're going to want to turn it over this way. And one more time. That'll shoot the boulders out there. That's just like a hole to the outside. Um, it essentially turns this whole trap off, and as you can see, there's a lot of elaborate pieces, <laughs> which um, I guess this is how all the traps in the fortress are powered. But anyway, we're gonna head down here, and oh, he survived. I think he's got like just a sliver of health left, so. Um, yeah, this is, once you drop down, you can't go back up, and uh, this is where we walked across earlier. So we're just gonna circle around, give him a smack, and we are good. So what did we open up in here? Uh, well, as you can see, there's a bunch of cages with people. Um, most of them are empty, but right here is a person. Let's see what he has to say. Hmm, you seem quite lucid. A rare thing in these times. I am Logan. I'm a bit cooped up, as you can see. I have a bright idea. Suppose you set me free. I'm old and empty-handed, but I could repay you with knowledge and sorcery. This place is melting my mind. The inactivity is repressive. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, Big Head Logan. Um, as you can see from his costume, he's a wizard, uh, kind of like Griggs. And I'm not sure if Griggs mentioned it yet, but he is um, on the lookout for Big Head Logan. That's sort of like what his quest is. So we're going to want to free him. Uh, we can't do it quite yet because we don't have the key to the cages. Um, if you had the master key, you could just open him and free him right now, but we're going to have to circle back here later on when we actually have some more equipment. I'm um, just sort of enjoying the view here. Um, only other thing of note here is a um, another item in there which is also locked. But uh, once we come back with the key, we'll be able to uh, address things a little better. Uh, let's talk to Logan one more time. I'm not sure if he has anything else to say. I think he just wants us to free him, right? Oh, it's just it's locked. Okay, <laughs> so... He's just going to sit there patiently. Um, I do feel bad for him, you know, he's like a super smart wizard, but he's got nothing to do but lay down and rot here in the cage. But um, this is the wrapping up point, guys, so we are going to sort of take a little break right here. Um, we're going to let our character enjoy the view, and then we're going to see you next time. So, guys, hope you enjoyed the, sh the, uh, enjoyed the show. <laughs> I won't edit that out. Um, thank you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys next time. We'll pick up right here. Um, bye. Well, <laughs> okay, yeah, let's just end there. How about that?